Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Monday of the 30, 32nd week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of Scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you can tell that our reading today is really out of sequence. We're in John's Gospel. And the reason for that is today is a very special feast day. It's the feast day of the dedication of the St. John Lateran Basilica in Rome. And St. John Lateran Basilica, many of us may forget the fact that St. Peter's Basilica is not the cathedral in Rome. It's the Basilica of St. John Lateran. That is the Pope's cathedral as the Bishop of Rome. And it's not named after a saint named St. John Lateran. It's kind of interesting how this particular church, this basilica, came into being. It originally was a palace. It was a palace belonging to a very wealthy, noble Roman by the name of Plautius Laternus. And after his death, uh, the Laterni family gave the property, the Laterani family, I should say, uh, it is Plautius Lateranus. I may have mispronounced that. But the Laterani family gave the palace uh, to Constantine. And he took and transformed the palace into a church. And it became the cathedral church in Rome. And also became the mother church of all the churches around the world. And so we have a special day. Not so much to think about a building but to think about the establishing of the church around the world under the, the uh, Bishop of Rome and the fact that from this very early beginning in the fourth century that we had a cathedral in Rome that was the place where the eyes of the world would turn in terms of the leadership of the, uh, of the popes that followed after St. Peter. And today's gospel then fits very beautifully because it is a reminder that the temple, or in our case, as we think about the basilica, this is a place of prayer. This is not a place dedicated to any other thing. It was a palace. It was a place where it served nobility. But now it is a place that serves the greatest nobility, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And again, I said it was not uh, dedicated to a guy by the name of uh, John Lateranus. It is the Laterni family, so that's where Lateran comes from, But uh, or the Laterani family. I think I must be really having a time with that. Anyway, uh, the Laterani family. But St. John the Baptist was the one to whom Constantine dedicated this church. So that's how it became the Basilica of St. John Lateran. And so, again, we're thinking about this scripture where Jesus, in righteous indignation, clears the temple of the money changers. 
he clears it of the sheep, the oxen, and the doves. What's going on? Well, there was a number of people who made a lot of money out of people coming for Passover. They came from other places uh, and came to Jerusalem for this feast, this great feast of, of, uh, of the Jews. And in doing so, they needed to provide themselves a sacrifice to offer to God. And so there were people in the temple area that would sell sacrifices. They had them there so that you really couldn't bring a sacrifice a long distance. It would be hard to do. So if you traveled a long distance, you brought money, and then you would use that money to buy the sacrifice. Well, you needed to change that money into temple money from whatever money you had. And so there were money changers. They exchanged currency. Now, let's face it, the money changers are making interest off of the exchange of money, just like they do today when you go through an airport and traveling to an interna- another country internationally. You have to exchange, and usually you pay a fee, an interest fee for doing that. It was the same here. To get to the temple money, you had, again, to pay interest on the money that you gave them. And guess what? When you bought a sacrifice, you paid a commission or interest or, uh, you know, a fee to those people who were selling you the sacrifice. People were making a lot of money out of the Feast of Passover. And Jesus had enough of it. They had turned what was a beautiful feast, a beautiful remembrance of Christ's uh, uh, example from the Old Testament, the Passover lamb helping to uh, be the symbol of the renewal of of uh, God's people, the Jews, the Israelites, being brought out of captivity and into freedom. And the Passover lamb was sacrificed, and that blood on the doorpost was what was the uh, reason that the death angel would pass over them, and later they would be free to come out of captivity and into their freedom as they entered toward the promised land. And Jesus was tired that this feast and this special place, a place that was a place of prayer, had been secularized, turned into a marketplace, made for the gain of men rather than the gain of God. And of course, when they asked him why he had the authority to do this, he basically prefigured not that temple, but his body, the temple, that would be destroyed but in the third day, raised again to new life. And this is what the disciples remembered after the resurrection. They remembered this account. They remembered watching him with great authority and with great conviction, clearing the temple of everything that is worldly. And that's what he did on the cross, is he cleared our hearts of that worldliness that as we apply his grace to our lives, we too can have that new life where our temple can be the residence of God. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today for this kind of Uh, A little bit of a remembrance both on the Basilica of St. John Lateran as well as a reflection on this scripture. And the Lord willing, we will see you tomorrow for Day by Day. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.